From the 28th of November to the 4th of December 2021, 18 participants of the IMD EMBA course embark on an impact investing discovery expedition to Lima, Peru. The expedition is a week-long journey of international connectivity and collaboration, of experiential learning, and of personal and professional growth. But it is also an active journey with challenging and measurable tasks for the participants. The discovery expedition to Peru it's not a discovery expedition to Peru. It's a discovery expedition on impact investing and social innovation that you can learn it better embedded in an environment like Peru where innovation pops in your face in every corner, from their food to their large enterprises to the social entrepreneurs. So you breathe and, 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 and eat <laughs> uh, social innovations. The ultimate goal of the expedition is for the EMBAs to conduct a due diligence to make investment recommendations on Peruvian social enterprises to a panel of international and local impact investors. I've never been to South America, so I see really the challenge very interesting to be in a very different environment and try to make business there, try to understand the culture on a very quick um, time of one week. It's a very important topic nowadays and coming from corporate backgrounds, now also learning about this part of the business that is a highlight, and uh, I believe that it is the future. What the social entrepreneurship can be in a different uh, setup and different environments, and even in the developing countries. The stakes are real, and the outcomes meaningful for the participants, the companies they meet, and the investors. This is the story of that journey. The expedition is led by Vanina Farber, Dean of the IMD EMBA and holder of the Elea Chair for Social Innovation. Throughout the week, Vanina will be supported by an amazing list of high-caliber speakers, from former presidents and government officials to pioneering entrepreneurs and leading investors. The program brings together an unprecedented quality and volume of experts on the Peruvian context. At the heart of the expedition are the concepts of social innovation and impact investing. What are the novel and impactful market solutions brought by the Peruvian social enterprises that are worth investing in? For many of the participants, their business experience so far has been in a purely commercial environment. And so, on day one, Vanina talks to the participants about what social innovation means how impact investment can do more than just create positive financial returns, but can also change the fabric of societies. It is something that has positive externality of positive outcomes, but again, it's related to business solutions. With a clear understanding of what social innovation means, the challenge has been set. Can the participants spot successful social innovation in the Peruvian context? How you marry commercial value with impact, you know, how do you find uh, the way or the innovations that allow you to respond to the social and environmental challenges in the country. And the first place to start is to experience the context for themselves. So the participants set off on a whirlwind journey into the chaotic, full of contrasts and vibrant Lima, taking in markets, heritage sites and diverse neighborhoods each place reflects the diverse nature of Peruvian society, bringing to light the economic, cultural and social structures that exist side by side. Places, people, landscape, history, and of course, the famously rich and diverse Peruvian food. I was impressed uh, by the heritage, by the, by the culture, and uh, there's still so much to learn about the heritage of Peru and uh, it was uh, eye-opening for me. To see all these differences was, uh, was very, very interesting. After an eye-opening first day's activities, the attention turns to understanding the macro environment of Peru. A stellar lineup of speakers has been arranged to share their own experiences of the Peruvian society and political landscape. 
information that will be vital in helping the participants to have a more rounded picture of the context in which the entrepreneurs and companies they will meet later operate. Every single year Peru grew and grew much faster than Latin America. So we're the head of the pack. Alonso Segura is a former Minister of Economy and Finance in Peru and sets the stage to understand the Peruvian model of growth while contextualizing it in the broader Latin American region. Despite political turmoil, corruption scandals, pandemic, and an increasingly polarized political landscape, Peru can be seen as a success story in the region, with more than 20 years of sustained growth and poverty reduction, at least until the pandemic. Jose Carlos Ugas has been fighting corruption in Peru for many years. He gives the participants an understanding of the systemic lack of institutional strength in Peru since its earliest days, and what this means for the stability of the country today. For the participants, this will be important. Investing in Peru brings with it inevitable risks that are part of a political system that is fundamentally unstable. But despite this, businesses are still able to thrive and, in many cases, to compensate for the lack of public goods. There's a lot of good people doing interesting things here. We Peruvians are experts in survival and creativity, and that's a huge resource. The problem is trust, because corruption erodes trust. And uh, many people here is, is wondering if it's, it's worth believing in, in institutions and other people. I do believe it's worth, and I think that's one of the big challenges. How do we reconstruct trust? Piero Getzi is a former Minister of Production in the Peruvian government. He has a deep understanding of the role of private capital and public capital in the Peruvian economy, as well as the relationship between informal and formal structures of business in the region. He explains to the participants the concept of two Perus, how it is perceived at a macro level and the reliability on the ground. Well, it was amazing to, to listen both sides, like the macroeconomy and the microeconomy, and then uh, trying to make sense of what's happening inside the country, especially to, to listen to, to the political history of the, the, the country and what is happening. I mean, it helps me to, to have a common language with the entrepreneur that I'm working. I, I was feeling that I understand what the, the challenging environment that they are operating in and the problems that they are addressing with their social innovation. He presents the concept of round tables, where different stakeholders collaborate to solve practical productive challenges. Mercedes Araoz is an economist and former vice president of Peru. She focuses on the dichotomy of the Peruvian opportunity, describing her optimism that things can improve, but recognizing that the current political deadlock situation is not aligned with the goals of the citizens. This will be a key factor for the participants to consider as they assess the investment opportunities. Can the companies they meet, who are focused on social innovation, thrive in this context? The political Peru right now is in a crisis. And I will say, usually in crisis, you can find solutions. As long as you have your ESG very clear, what is your purpose, you can really cooperate and change things. Armed with a crash course in the complexities of the Peruvian political landscape and puzzled by the optimism of the speakers, it's time for the participants to see how this manifests in the real world of Peruvian social business. Time to start meeting the companies they've previously only spoken to from afar and get face to face with the entrepreneurs. This is game time. In the afternoon and tomorrow morning, They'll meet the leaders of the businesses and start to form their views of whether what they're building is genuinely worth investing in. The key challenge is to actively listen to them. What has uh, impressed me the most is, is the passion of our entrepreneurs for the social impact. So the first, we need to really understand the business model and the logic behind. To grasp the understanding of the social purpose they're trying to achieve because certainly they, their purpose is good and the intention is good. But we need to make sure that the social impact lasts the long term and can survive with the business realities in the country. We are here 
in Lima, we have here our Andean Mines plant, and then we have the, the plant in Cajamarca and the other plants in, in Ucayali. There are many challenges for the participants at this stage of the expedition. They need to understand the value proposition and place in the market of the companies they're meeting and to use what they've learnt about the Peruvian economic, political and social landscape as a lens through which to view these businesses. Are they bringing to market solutions that address the challenges identified by the speakers, such as the informality of the economy, the two Perus, the lack of quality public goods like health and education? They need to create a relationship of trust with the founders of the businesses and get a sense for whether they would be good candidates for impact investment. And they need to bring a rigorous and analytical perspective to evaluating the scalability of their business models. Do these companies make for good investments? And as importantly, is impact at the core of the business? Even if the business model is robust, with a proven need in the Peruvian market, are they able to demonstrate meaningful and sustainable social impact as they grow? It can be difficult to separate each of these considerations, and the participants spend many hours discussing the companies in their groups and debating the issues. This is going to be paid by the company. So the company is basically paying uh, this uh, software as a service that you're providing to them as an additional fee. And this is the principal studio. Um, maybe you want to see what there is. As well as meeting with the companies, the participants were also able to broaden their understanding of what the companies were offering by arranging time to talk to other stakeholders. This includes board members, existing investors, and also, very importantly, customers who are using these products and services. What is becoming very clear for the participants as they build out the case for each company is that there is much at stake. Separating their emotional connections to the charismatic and purpose-driven entrepreneurs and the much-needed goods and services they can offer from an investment recommendation is no easy task. It requires sound and critical reflection, and they try to remain conscious of the fact that whatever recommendation they will ultimately offer to the investment panel will need to be backed up by a very clear and thought-through set of financial and impact reasons. The LA Way Due Diligence Framework written with Peter Woofley, is key in helping participants to structure this task. It's all about checking the assumptions, getting feedback from different perspectives, and try to put all these feedbacks into context of our work for this project. I think the amazing thing here is that we see that the entrepreneurs hold the key to their future, and they do it in collaboration with the impact investors, and in the context of Peru, this amazing dual society, many different elements of the economy here, and we're really seeing the value that these entrepreneurs can bring, and actually it's up to them to deliver. So it's been great to find out about really the way that they evolve as a company uh, through their journey and could be supported by the investors in the future. Uh, what I have learned that uh, social entrepreneurship is a journey with its ups and downs, but to make it through, you have to put the purpose of your social impact ahead of you and follow, follow the dream. They had uh, politicians, policymakers, successful businesses, so they had all this, this information uh, in their head and sometimes even getting very attached to the entrepreneurs, but they need to step back and think as an investor because they need to advise investors, they need to think again about country risk when now they feel safe, you no? Know? So I think the idea is how, how they are going to make the decision now, how they're going to bring to marry these two things when uh, sharing with all these people in Peru became very personal. You know? It's the end of day three, and the participants are making sense of everything they've heard and starting to form some initial thoughts for their investment presentations. But refining those can wait for another time. After a thrilling three days, what better way to unwind than to get a taste for Peru's famous speciality, Pisco. In Book Vivant, an innovative bookstore that marries the love of books with a love of spirits, they're treated to a spirited evening of all things Pisco. Oh, good Pisco. 
<laughs> Learning about the history of Pisco, the possibilities and varieties, the role it plays in Peruvian life, and the passion that is evident in the Pisco industry. You can feel the fresh percol, of course, but the freshness. It's clear that the entrepreneurialism and diversity that they've experienced earlier in the expedition is reflected in every glass of the famous spirit. The tasting brings a new lens to experience the marriage of entrepreneurialism and heritage. Peruvian Pisco is a feeling. We make it with our heart. Day four begins with somewhat clearer heads and a chance to visit the famous community of Sarua. This UNESCO-recognized community has long been known for its artists and their tradition of the Sarua tables, a centuries-old tradition of painting that exists here and nowhere else. It has long been recognized as a cultural jewel in Peru and is now at the center of a number of socially impactful initiatives to promote economic growth and empowerment of its community through the revaluation of its heritage expression, female empowerment and natural resources. In particular, the recognition of female artists taking the lead and redefining how the Sarawa stories are told is a powerful development. This is a chance for the participants to experience these unique artworks, meet and spend time with a native community, and also to experience a different expression of social innovation and impact through art in real time. Uh, they found a way uh, with their art to communicate to the outside world and also they find a way with their beautiful arts to, uh, to make a business. And uh, it was very inspiring because it is not only about this community, there are hundreds of these communities in, in Peru. They have great ideas, they have great art, yet they are not really businessmen. So it, it brings a lot of um, space for social innovation to support these communities and also to help them for instance, to, to bring their arts to the world and to the outside, of, outside world. After the Sarawa visit, the participants return to their base with a Sarawa table in their hands that tells their own story of the DE. Though Sarawa represented a break from immersing themselves in the companies they'll be presenting, it reminds participants that business can be a tool for empowerment. Minds are now ready to focus not only on social entrepreneurs, but on the impact investors. If the participants are to make meaningful and persuasive arguments to impact investors, they need to understand what these investors are looking for. What drives them? What are the key data points they need to make decisions? What resonates with them? And how do they make decisions? There's a, there's a former IMD president called Peter Laurent. He likes to say, good can always be better. And here, uh, what I'm seeing a lot this, uh, this week is that uh, when you're trying to do good, um, you're often challenged with, you know, what's, what's, what's the next best thing you can do? It's time to understand the mindset of an impact investor. A list of the most experienced and influential impact investors in the region has been brought together to meet the participants. Adrian Akaret is the CFO of the Elea Foundation. The purpose of the foundation is to fight absolute poverty with entrepreneurial means, capitalizing on the benefits and opportunities of globalization. They live and breathe philanthropic impact investing and can share invaluable insights for the participants as to what gets an impact investor out of bed in the morning. Adrian discusses the live case study of Inca Moss with the group and what they can learn from this live due diligence and participants discussed the best financial instruments for impact investors to marry returns and impact. The question would be where there is a real um, need to have this combination in order to make certain innovations even possible and um, kind of uh, uh, scalable in the medium to long term. The next guest is Jorge Fafan, an impact investor at Bamboo Capital from Switzerland. They specialize in impact investment through innovative financial solutions to businesses. Essentially, they power impact businesses and are very active in LATAM. There is room to improve, let's work on that. Next to address the participants was Natasha Barantseva from Andes Impact Partners. 
as well as describing how they evaluate impact investment in the region. Natasha spoke about gender lens investing and the emerging role of women in the impact ecosystem, both as investors and entrepreneurs. Participants start understanding the different faces of impact investment and the different impact focus and risk return profiles of the speakers. They start thinking at this stage which social enterprises match with the different impact investors' preferences. It's been another day packed with learning, from the community at Sarua to the impact investors, with deep experience of what makes the Peruvian landscape unique for impact investors. The participants could do with something different, and what better way to unwind than to dance, hip-hop style. D1, a social enterprise that participants are analyzing, returns in a different way. The team are pushed outside of their comfort zone. At least some of them are. But for everyone, it is a chance to move, to express themselves, and to deepen their bond as a group through a thrilling shared experience while meeting the instructor who shows clearly the impact that D1 has on underprivileged youth. Day 5 brings to the picture successful and impactful corporates. They have the opportunity to hear from three Peruvian businesses that marry social and environmental impact with financial returns. Cuna, Incaterra and Dampa are Peruvian business success stories. Alonso Burgos and Andres Chavez Cuzzi shared how the Black Alpaca exclusive collection became the answer to conserving the pure black alpacas currently in danger of disappearing while preserving the textile legacy of Peru and reducing environmental damage and use of chemical dyes. These, uh, these are companies that do care about bringing impact in the country, so there's an intentionality aspect of it. And this as, um, as investment under under the objective of bringing impact, it's, it's, it's a key, right? So I think that's that what uh, struck the most. And from our personal perspective, obviously, is evaluating to what extent can that be scaled. Um, and uh, our job is really to understand how can we also help them? How can we envision a scalability aspect of, uh, of what they're doing? Jose Koechlin von Stein established Inca Terra in 1975 pioneering ecotourism and sustainable development in Peru. Aiming to underscore natural and cultural values, Inca Terra fosters scientific research produced as a basis for conservation, education and the well-being of local communities, while running award-winning luxury hotels in premium locations of Peru. The Amazon rainforest in Madre de Dios, the Machu Picchu cloud forest, the sacred valley of the Incas, the city of Cusco and the Cabo Blanco coastline. Achievements in research and conservation in hotel grounds include the study of 814 bird species registered at Inca Terra areas of influence, equivalent to 93% of Costa Rica's total bird diversity. The description of 362 ant species, world record sponsored by Harvard biologist E. O. Wilson, the Andean Bear Conservation Center at Incaterra Machu Picchu Pueblo Hotel in benefit of the only bear species native to South America and the world's largest native orchid collection, according to the American Orchid Society, with 372 species, including 20 new to science. Charo is a true trailblazer. She is the first female to chair the Chamber of Commerce of Tujillo as CEO of Danpa, which she established in 1994, she has led the way in many spheres. From a business perspective, the company pioneered a market for specially grown foods for export that are not native to Peru. We have a north, a clear north. We know what we want. And what we want is a country that progresses. And for that, we really need to work hard. So today I'm gonna show you a perspective of uh, the sector to which I belong, and that is uh, agro-industry. And from a cultural perspective, she was one of the first female CEOs in Peru, paving the way for a move to gender equality in the region. 20 plus years later, the business is one of the most established and successful in the critically important agriculture industry. 
employing over 8,500 people and with 10,000 hectares of cultivated land. And she has continued to set the standard in the areas of healthcare and education for the workforce. A Peruvian success story that inspires the participants. In many ways, these corporates serve as the model the startups can aspire to. Could the social entrepreneurs EMBAs are working with become the Joe Quechlin or Charo Basan in 20 years? An important and much-loved element of the week has been the delights of Peruvian cuisine. And the Peruvian diversity continues to awaken the participants' senses with a special lunch at Osaka. Here, Peruvian produce from highlands, rainforests and coastline meet Japanese tradition. An explosion of colours and flavours continues the culinary journey of Peruvian cuisine to the participants. It's getting close to presentation time. The teams are working very hard on finalising their recommendations for the panel. Tensions are high, as the teams need to bring everything they've learnt, all the analysis and data points, into a clear investment case. They get one chance to present, and no one is unaware that they have to do justice to the social enterprises they met, their convictions, and make a compelling case, whether they're advocating for investment or not. The big day is here. It's time for the presentations. For the next three hours, each team will get an opportunity to make their case. It's done. All the work has culminated in powerful presentations from every group. The panel have a chance to evaluate and feed back, and it's now in their hands. For the participants, the experience has been in parts thrilling, emotional, difficult, challenging, and mostly inspirational. Uh, the whole week has been amazing, and there's so many highlights that come up to my mind. But the key takeaway for me is uh, not to lose the sight of the financials in the due diligence of the social entrepreneurs. We were so much focused on identifying the social impact and making sure it is there, that it's sustainable, but sort of lost a little bit of track of the revenue streams and the financial side of it. I felt positive and uh, felt empowered representing the, um, um, the different perspectives. So that was amazing, for sure. The, the great teamwork that we had, preparing everything together, uh, sharing the responsibility, that was nice. Uh, it's also interesting to see how these entrepreneurs need to balance profitability of the company versus impact. Uh, it's a real challenge for them and it was also a challenge for us to uh, demonstrate that it's uh, worth to, to invest in these companies to these investors. What surprised me most uh, this uh, week is that I actually discovered business model innovation. I discovered new business models with social impact built into those business models connecting you know, uh, fringes of the population that would otherwise be segregated, for instance, and creating value together. Um, to me, that was, uh, that was the main learning. And, uh, and this is this innovation coming from, uh, from the global south or from emerging economies that is very, uh, very inspiring. The most uh, challenging part of uh, the assignment were really to change perspective. Uh, we're used to thinking with our own uh, European uh, perspectives, uh, which impacts the way uh, we do our business, which is not the same reality here in, in Peru. So what we are able to observe and understand by being here in Peru is uh, just, uh, just amazing. I felt, of course, nervous. And on the other side, I felt really excited about their opportunity to present in front of their um, uh, VCs. So that was I felt it was a mixed feelings, for sure. Well, the presentation was quite challenging because we've learned a lot during this week. And uh, being able to convey a clear message and uh, demonstrate what the social value uh, that these entrepreneurs bring with their company, plus uh, demonstrating the financial um, uh, profitability of the companies, what not always a busy, an, easy, an easy task. Uh, you get an assignment, but it's far beyond this assignment. You have to go really deep, uh, working with the entrepreneurs. To celebrate the week, they're going to experience another of Peru's delights, the ceviche experience. Second, 
my restaurant, no? It's a chain of restaurants. We have 16 restaurants in the world, six in Peru. To close the week, the participants are treated to an audience with a very special guest. Francisco Sagasti is a former president of Peru, 2020 to 2021. The region is really has an enormous potential. And this, by the way, is now attracting new ways of organizing our economic life. And I only hope, and I'm crossing my fingers, that our political class will understand the time we live in, will understand the potential, not only of resources and uh, culture, but also the entrepreneurship, the drive, the ideas of most Latin Americans, and create some political systems that allow us to, as they call it, to ride the waves of change in the most appropriate manner. He reflects the feelings of the group after their week. Optimism is the key word. In Peru, the power of people and business as agents of change and the role of impact investing to make a real difference. I'll take back uh, curiosity. Um, you know, this expands the scope of your knowledge, but this also expands the scope of what you don't know. This opens your eyes on so many things you still have to learn. So I'll take back, you know, even more curiosity than before. What I found inspirational for myself, um, what I called uh, the phenomena of Peru, is the mindset of people living here. Uh, how they're proud of to be uh, Peruvians and uh, how it's important for them to contribute uh, to change the society, uh, to change the political system, uh, and they take this responsibility on them. Um, it was an amazing <laughs> experience. In Peru, in the power of people and businesses as agents of change and the role of impact investing to make a real difference. And with that, the expedition has come to a close. The group round up their experiences and learnings and what this means for them in their personal lives and professional careers. It has been a week of learning, of growth and of discovery. Real learning, real impact. IMD EMBA style.